Greetings, I'm Hondo, and this is my review of the Modern Vintage Guitars MVP 462. Uh, the single chain today is going to be two of these bases, one with rounds and one with flats, into my Trickfish 0.5k bullhead head and then straight into Ableton. So these bases are built off of early 60s precision specs. So they have alder bodies and maple necks. And the necks are particularly cool because they're torrified, uh, which some other companies call roasted. And basically what that process is, is they take uh, the wood and they cook it in a special oven that doesn't have any oxygen in it so the wood doesn't catch on fire. And what that process essentially does is gets rid of 90% of the moisture in the neck. So it makes it really rigid and it's supposed to give it kind of like extra resonance. And that process of the moisture leaving the wood is something that actually is supposed to happen in vintage bases over a long period of time naturally. So really the goal here is to kind of accelerate that and give you uh, a base that has that kind of vintage kind of sound and feel, but you don't have to wait 40 years for it. And as far as whether or not that works, I don't have other vintage bases here to compare it to. So, you know, I'm not going to say like, oh, yeah, this sounds just like a 1960s Fender P bass. Uh, but what I can tell you is that this is one of the nicest feeling necks I've played, and especially given uh, the price range that this bass is in. And the bass sounds incredible. Uh, and it's got a very lively feel to it. And I kind of have to assume some of that has to do with the rigidity um, and kind of the resonance of the neck on the instrument. So, you know, I don't know if this sounds exactly like an early 60s uh, P bass, but I kind of don't care because to me, this sounds amazing. So sticking in that uh, vintage theme, the bass has uh, Clover style hip shot tuners. And at the nut, it's a one inch and three quarters uh, width, which is super cool because I kind of like that wider P bass style uh, neck that kind of gives you something to hold on to when you're really like digging in and rocking out. Uh, the string spacing is wider at around 19 millimeters. And down at the bridge, it's something unique because you get uh, steel saddles, which I don't see on a lot of instruments. Um, and it's a you know vintage bent style bridge. Uh, the pickup is a proprietary pickup that's got a vintage voicing and the controls are just volume and tone. Uh, as far as the build on this bass is concerned, this is pretty outrageous for something that costs less than $2,000. Um, these basses are built in Korea and typically when I play instruments that are 
built overseas, um, you know, in Korean shops, Indonesian shops or whatever, you can kind of feel different places where the corners were kind of cut to keep the price down. Um, and I'm not saying at all that's a negative thing because, you know, sometimes you just have to do that to be able to make affordable instruments for people. Uh, but with this bass, I don't really feel that anywhere, which is saying something, um, you know, everything on here, the hardware is really good. The electronics are good. Uh, the neck is really, really well seated in the joint. Um, there was no twists in the neck. It came with a great setup. This thing stays in tune fantastically. There's really nothing bad I can say about the build. Um, and when I got this, I had it for about two weeks and I bought two more. Uh, so the quality control is excellent because all three of these bases uh, play and feel just as good as one another. Um, and I know a lot of bigger companies can't really do that these days. Uh, so as far as the build quality is concerned, I'm super impressed. So back in 2019, I was looking to do some more session work and more work with other artists. Um, and in order to do that, I kind of thought, you know, I need to have a J and a P in my arsenal because, you know, those sounds are iconic sounds and a lot of artists equate those two sounds with bass in their head. So I was like, I got to get a good J and a good P. So I went around for the better part of a year, kind of diff trying different things. Um, I played a couple of like actual 50s and 60s P basses, which were really cool. Um, I tried a bunch of different brands, did research, looked into getting some custom stuff, but nothing really kind of like grabbed my attention and said like, this is it. Um, and then NAM 2020 rolled around. And again, I played a bunch of different uh, builders bases there. They were all very cool, but you know, they weren't kind of like doing it for me, so to speak. Um, I was kind of looking for something that when I played it, I knew like, this is it, this is the bass. Um, and that's exactly what happened when I went to the modern vintage booth. Uh, I remember I saw a black J bass uh, up on their stand with a the bell cover over the neck pickup. And I'm a sucker for that kind of look. So I went over and I was drooling at it and they let me play it. Uh, and as soon as I played it, like maybe five or six notes in, I thought like, this is it, this is the bass that I want. And I kind of like <laughs> braced for impact. Cause I'm like, oh my God, this is gonna be so expensive. And I asked the guy like, okay, like hit me with it. How much is this gonna hurt my wallet? And he told me it was 1600 bucks. And like my brain melted out of my ears. I was like, there's no way in hell these are $1,600. Um, these feel like they should be at least twice the price. Um, and the sound now that I've got it in my own kind of recording setup, uh, goes right along with it. They sound and feel just absolutely incredible. Um, the balance on them is also fantastic. When you put these on a strap and you keep it at, you know, the height it would normally be while you're sitting, the neck kind of just balances. You know, you don't have to um, push up on the neck like you have to do with some bases that are a little bit neck heavy um, to keep it in a comfortable position. Um, it feels great to play. It stays in tune like a champ, you know, which is more than I can say for some instruments that I've gotten that were made overseas. Um, and it just doesn't feel like any corners were cut. And it's just an incredible instrument. And this is the kind of instrument that I think a lot of people who are looking to kind of be pro working players, uh, this is like perfect for them. Um, any Actually, anybody who's serious about playing bass, you need to take a look at these because they're just outrageous. Um, the balance is great. Um, they're only eight and a half pounds, so they're not super heavy. Um, the construction is excellent, like I mentioned earlier. The sound is great. I, really, there's nothing bad that I can say about these. Um, and I actually thought pretty hard about it. Um, also, one of the things I usually have a pet peeve about with vintage bases is they have that vintage truss rod adjustment. Uh, but there's actually a route, a little channel down here that you can adjust the truss rod for these. Uh, which makes them a lot easier to actually use if you're kind of like out and about quite a bit and you're in different climates and whatnot. Uh, you might have to make little adjustments here and there. And with this, you can do it in a heartbeat. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this bass is great. And I think if you are in the market for a vintage style P bass and you know, you don't want to completely and utterly destroy your wallet, you know, definitely give the MVP4 a look um, because I think if you don't at least consider it, kind of put it there in the in the mix with the other instruments, you'd be doing yourself a little bit of a disservice. 
Um, but yeah, I can't say anything else about this. This thing's awesome. So this is a high quality precision style bass and because of that it sounds good with everything <laughs> so I did a bunch of different bonus clips with this one and with the uh, the other one that I have that has flats on it. Uh, I'm not going to run through the whole list because it's a lot. Just check them out and let me know uh, which ones are your favorite down in the comments. So in summary, this is a killing P bass at a great value. Um, I think every bassist, um, if you can swing it, you should probably have a P bass lying around somewhere uh, because this is just such an iconic sound. And these basses absolutely nail that sound and they play incredibly well with great balance and they're a great value. Uh, so if you're looking for a P bass, definitely don't sleep on these because they're awesome. So that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you dug it. Uh, if you did, please do subscribe and leave a thumbs up. That really helps out the channel and I greatly appreciate it. Uh, down in the description below, there's links for these bases and all the other pedals that I use in the video. Uh, and also links for my social, so my Twitch and my Instagram and the Discord. Um, and it would be really cool if you would come over and hang out on those platforms. It would be awesome to interact with all of you. Um, a lot of you have already been kind of reaching out and talking to me and it's been really cool and really fun. So thank you for that. Um, all that said, um, I hope you're staying happy and staying healthy and I hope I see you around soon. Take it easy.